so we all talk about F1 2020 being the greatest F1 game of all time, but I think F1 2019 puts up a solid fight. It might not be the best, but it puts up a solid fight and it could be up there. Other people will probably say things like the classic cars it has or the old tracks it has, but for me, it comes down to one reason and that is the career mode. There is no driver career mode like the one in F1 2019. In 2018, they didn't have driver transfers yet. And in 2020, they added my team, which drastically cut down on the regular driver career mode. So F1 2019 is in this sweet spot where all the focus and optimization was in the driver career mode and it had driver transfers that it never had before. On top of that, you may cringe at the breaking point story nowadays, but back then, it was still cringy, but it wasn't as over the top. I was looking for you. And what the best thing about the intro F2 story mode was that it integrated into your career mode. So you would see your teammates like Lucas Weber in F2, he would stay in F1 for 10 years unless he got fired or something. And you just felt like you were building your own F1 universe because of that. You were building your own F1 story. Oh, I lost in the championship to, um, what's that guy's name? Is Weber the bad guy or the good guy? Let me check. Who is the bad guy of F1 2019? Top search result is Sebastian Vettel. <laughs> um, let's see. What's the guy's name? Devin Butler. That's his name. That's his name right there. So you might lose the F2 championship to him. And so that kind of affects your mindset on how you drive him in F1, or you might beat him. And so you don't really care about him in F1. And I just love that universe building that is so unique to F1 2019. The other great thing about career mode is that your performance actually affects your contracts and your contracts actually matter because you can negotiate certain contract bonuses that actually affect affect your whole experience because when you negotiate, you'll negotiate resource bonuses, you'll negotiate better upgrade time, and you can even negotiate to have better quick stops. And while, you know, you can't negotiate that in real life, a pit stop's gonna be slower fast depending on how good the team is. It's not gonna, be, they're not gonna give you a slower pit stop in real life because you're worse than your teammate. But it was just nice to have that added motivation to keep pushing forward, maybe push for spots you wouldn't normally get because you knew a contract negotiation was coming up and you needed to boost your reputation. And probably the aspect that people don't talk about too much, but I know people agree on, I've seen it on Reddit, is that I think 2019 has one of the best AI. In 2020, it's a little too passive. They don't go for too much passes. In a game like 22, they're so crazy. They lock up, they hit you. But I feel like 2019, they are not pushovers. They will go for the pass, but they do it respectfully. And I really like the aggression of this AI over 2020 or even 2023. And because they don't just lay back, it just makes it such a, a much more exciting experience. So overall, 2019, honestly, sitting here talking to you, and I just wanna go play it now, play it over 2020 even. Thanks for watching. If you want to hear about another underrated sim racing game, if you want to hear about Project Cars 2, click here.